welcome everybody. So I'm uh, Arndt van Oosterbeerd, and I'm the Chief Learning Officer at the Consortium for Service Innovation. And so I head up the training and certification arm of the consortium. And we used to refer to that as the KCS Academy, but we decided to retire the KCS Academy name when we started creating training uh, and certification beyond KCS, such as our recently introduced um, oops, KCS, um, I mean, uh, Intelligent Swarming um, course, as well as the exam. But uh, nothing else has changed. We still are doing the um, KCS in action and uh, are still committed to um, bringing training best practices on KCS and other consortium innovations to the broader community. Uh, and for today's KCS in action, we've assembled a panel of uh, folks to talk about the critical domain analysis um, program. So the knowledge domain analysis program and, and the various ways to leverage your knowledge domain engineer. You're gonna hear KDA and KDE quite a bit. So KDA, the knowledge domain analysis and KDE, the knowledge domain engineers who do the analysis. And there's no one right way to do this analysis and judgment is certainly required. Um, so you wanna optimize that for your company. And one of the nice things about having the panel is it gives you some uh, great approaches. So you'll see some similarities, but you're also gonna see some very unique um, approaches that they have. So I'm pleased to introduce uh, Dave Stewart from Akamai and uh, Andy Kindle from NetApp and Daniel Miller from Geotab. And they're gonna be our panel today. Um, and this session is being recorded and it's gonna be posted on the consortium site as well as sent out to all who have registered. And we're also gonna be providing uh, this presentation when we send out the recording. And we have a, a number of uh, um, questions that we'll be going through with the panel and we'll provide a summary of the panel questions and the answers along with that. So hopefully you'll have quite a bit of resources to you and then we'll certainly provide the, uh, the chat uh, log and um, we'll do a quick blog on that too. But uh, during this, if you could please put yourself on mute during the event, and then please post your questions in chat. So we have many people from the three companies that will be monitoring the chat, and we'll either answer them in the chat or save them for the Q&A session at the end. Um, but want to make sure you're also aware of upcoming KCS in action events. I think we have five or six of them queued up already, so quite a few. And Jennifer Mortcat, our customer success manager, we'll be posting a link to uh, the events in the chat. But I'm very excited about today's event. And so let's get started here. Um, but before we begin with the questions, just to get to know the panel, um, each of the panel speakers will give you just a brief introduction to themselves, their company, their service organization, and their KDA program. So uh, Daniel, you wanna kick us off? Oh, happy to, thank you. Uh, this is Daniel Miller. I'm KCS uh, Program Manager at Geotab. I've been here uh, coming up on three years. I was hired in specifically to get the KDE program going. Uh, so it was a very nice opportunity. Uh, previously, I was at Oracle for 21 years. Thoroughly enjoyed that time. Uh, and out of my entire career, I've spent about 19 years involved in knowledge management and KCS in one form or another. Um, I was actually involved in Primus, if you guys remember that old piece of software uh, that was acquired by Oracle. Uh, so just real quickly, Geotab, it was created about in 2000. Uh, it was a South uh, African company, moved to Canada. It's the number one telematic provider in that uh, fleets use it to monitor their vehicles, uh, the traffic patterns, you know, emergency stops, that type of thing. Uh, we have about 3 million subscribers, so that was just the goal that we just hit, so yay. Uh, and we have about 2,000 full-time employees spanning 12 countries, so we are definitely global. Now, to give you an idea of just how Geotab focuses, uh, they focus 25% of their employees are dedicated to technology development, but then we have 23% that are still focused on customer solution services, so um after the fact, after the sale, a lot of support there. Uh, and then across the bottom, we have the six pillars that the Geotab innovation is built on. Uh, I'm not going to go into all of those. And uh, but as you can see, uh, very, uh, very uh, focused on 
some very specific things for keeping the company going and focused on, on being a good company. Okay. Um, our support offering includes uh, your standard community discussions, which you're all pretty familiar with. We also have self-service in community and support sites. So we have two different support, uh, two different sites, the community and support site, where people can access all of our self-service content. Uh, we also have in-product help. So it's built directly into the product, which is a uh, relatively recent addition for us and very excited about that. Um, across the customer solution services, including agent assist, we have about 473 people. It's divided up into three separate tiers. So the uh, three tier support system. And we have several different uh, entry, uh, entry points for getting support. Our uh, KDA program, it's um, set up kind of interestingly. We do it we different we do it differently than most people. Everybody reporting to the KCS program analyst is a dotted line report, so there are no direct reports. Um, we have two different setups. We have the KDEs, which is our tier uh, two and three uh, people, and we have one or two per domain, depending on depending on the size of the domain. Um, they all report to their own team leads. So um, we also have deputy KDEs that they're at a ratio of about one per 75 people. And these are uh, these deputy KDEs, they handle more of the repetitive work and then they get help from the, uh, the product KDEs as needed. And we'll go more into specifically what they do uh, a little bit later on, but we have our six KDEs, they spend about 10 hours per quarter working on the Pareto analysis and their deep dive analysis, whereas the deputy KDEs spend anywhere from two to four hours per week uh, focusing on the, uh, on the work that's assigned to them. Thanks, Dan. And Andy, you wanna go next? Yes, um, so Andy, um... I'm the principal KDE with the NetApp. Um, so we are, I'm heading the, the KDE program here um, and I'm in NetApp since 15 years. Um, all of them in support, all of them working with knowledge across the board. Um, so who is NetApp? Um, NetApp is a, a cloud-led data-centric software company, meaning we do a lot of storage management in the cloud and outside of the cloud. Um, we're around 11,000 employees um, with over 5,400 partners worldwide um, in over 30 countries. Um, so what is NetApp support? NetApp support is a roughly 1,000 engineers um, across 10 languages, supporting, uh, supporting them out, uh, customers out of 10 sites across the globe, from Tokyo up to, um, to San Francisco or San Jose now. Um, how do we work in support? Um, we have several channels and I can recommend you only the, um, the session that Ryan Matthews did a couple of weeks ago um, in one of these uh, presentations. We have assisted support, which is basically your daily case um, work that you're um, used to. We have self-service, which is mainly our KB. Um, we have community um, and social, um, which is Discord and our community page. We have um, our detect and predict mechanisms where we analyze call home data from our products and give customers proactive recommendations and detect things before they are happening. And we are um, having in-product support um, APIs um, where customers can open cases directly out of the product, directly from where they have the problem. So our KDE program, um, we, we have nine full-time KDEs. Um, that are spending 75 to 90% of their time on KDE work, um, 10 to 25% on staying relevant. We have approximately 40 part-time KDEs that spend between 10 and 25% of their time on KDE. Um, and we're split up in 40 knowledge domains. Um, the full-time KDEs also have an enablement function towards the part-time KDEs to help them with um, data analytics and so on to, um, to get all of that properly sorted out. Great, thanks. And Dave, you want to go next? 
<clears throat> sure. Uh, hi, I'm Dave Stewart. I am the scruffy looking character to the right, in case you were wondering. Um, I recently joined Akamai uh, in mid-2022 as the new KCS program lead, uh, uh, taking over a program that was already well underway, thanks to the great work from uh, Monique, who I'm sure you all know, and others. Uh, prior to that, I was the KCS program owner for IBM Worldwide Support since 2016, and not quite to Daniel's level, but I've been in knowledge management and KCS for 17 years. Um, a long hiatus outside of the consortium after the good old days of hosting summits and being engaged with everybody uh, prior to 2010. Uh, next slide, please. So as an overview of Akamai, founded in 1998, headquartered in Cambridge, Mass., um, a Fortune 500 company, like many consortium members, but we also serve over half of the Fortune 500 with our critical platform capabilities. 11,500 customers, 135 countries, almost 10,000 employees and 62 offices across 30 countries. And we provide a wide range of content delivery, network services, cybersecurity, cloud service. Um, our best known offering is our Intelligent Edge platform. It is the world's most pervasive, highly distributed content delivery network. Over 355,000 servers across 1,300 networks over those 135 countries. And our company purpose statement, I think, captures it, captures it really well. Our goal is to make life better for billions of people, billions of times a day. And I had a moment early on in my tenure here that really drove home what Akamai does. When I first arrived, I was getting flooded with emails. New guy, hasn't set up his filter. But so many of them were for things like upcoming Prime Day, the new uh, gaming streaming event, um, Black Friday, the Olympics, things like that were to come. Uh, World Cup. And I thought, are these watch parties? Because those are the kind of emails I would get through the social channels at IBM. But no, this is mission critical stuff, all hands on deck and Akamai is there to make sure that these uh, events go through smoothly, safely and profitably for our, the companies that entrust us. So that's Akamai in a nutshell. Next slide. Oh, we got it. So in terms of how we provide support, um, we have a maturity model that we're always striving to evolve. We, we call this our, our shift right, in a sense, to, to the common shift left. Uh, we want to be, we want to uh, graduate from that reactive um, support to more proactive, preventative, and of course, intelligent um, automation and so on. But our standards are still self-service. Uh, we have a strong uh, community forum in place. And through our federated search, clients have access to our knowledge articles, tech talks, blogs, and our developer uh, developer portal. And we also have the Akamai Control Center uh, through which our clients can go in, run reports, um, uh, see how things are going, uh, tweak things. So they, they have a lot of uh, information at their fingertips. Now, this isn't official. I call it light support, uh, which I see the live chat programs uh, as, but we have the Akachat program, which is there as an interim, uh, immediate sort of um, um, way for con uh, customers to reach out to us. If we can't resolve their issues immediately, at least we're triaging them and setting them up for success by the time their tickets are responded to. And of course, we have the standard traditional assisted support methods through uh, web, email, phone. We are trying to get away from email, but it is a slow process, as I'm sure many of you can uh, appreciate. Next slide, please. In terms of our overall KDA program, this is a uh, diagram of our KCS program. And you can see in Akamai, Berry Red, uh, the KDE elements of that. So we have things really structured. Um, to complement everything else that we're doing. Uh, we have the KDE program with uh, what we call leads, informally representing each of the geos. And uh, we have a, a number of knowledge domain experts in each of those geos. All told, we have uh, 39 at the moment, nine of whom we consider to be KCS leads. They're product, part of our product lead expert, uh, product line expert group. So they are the cream of the cream of the crop. Um, overall, it's actually about a one to 10 ratio in terms of KDEs to case taking support engineers, but uh, they're all part time. So you have to factor that in. Um, we shoot for around eight hours a month, but we try not to be overly prescriptive and some of them go well beyond uh, that level of contribution. And again, these are all tier two um, uh, support professionals, our escalations team, product support group and product line experts. All right. Well, thanks, Dave, for introducing your KDA program as well as you know, Lynn and Andy. As you can see, they're all different, different, but different um, companies. So they're optimized for their company. But Dave, since we have you, you want to uh, 
Talk about some of the main activities of your uh, KDs. What do they perform? Sure. Um, well, we've evolved this over time, uh, but the primary responsibility of our KD East is to ensure that we have an up-to-date, healthy knowledge base with quality content, as much external as possible, which can be a challenge for some of our products uh, through these Evolve Loop activities, uh, primary of which are domain curation, um, editing, creating, archiving, um, deleting, even merging content to dedupe some common topics. We do content gap analysis. We do beta article work to make sure that upcoming releases go smoothly. And one of the big things that has been really successful for us is involving our KDEs in our, what we call the KCS driven problem management sprints. And there was a consortium presentation on that, I think within the past year that you might want to check out. And that's been a, a really um, very impactful way of uh, having them involved. Great, well, thanks Andy. How about you at uh, NetApp? Where are some main activities of your KDEs? So the, the main focus is problem elimination and you can do that in a, in a number of different ways. Um, but the main thing is make it easier for the customer, have less friction in the system. So what contributes to that? Feedbacks, obviously we, we try to answer all customer feedbacks within a day. Um, internal based on the importance of the KB. Um, we try to clean up the communities um, and Discord to see if there are any unanswered threats um, that need answering. Um, focusing also on mainly enabling peer-to-peer, -peer, so not just stepping in and answering everything, but enabling the customers to do it themselves. Product improvements is a big area. Identify and drive problems there. Even if it's working as designed, maybe there is something to improve. Drive the automation opportunities. What can we automate for the customer? And obviously what, uh, what is in the KCS world, knowledge work, simplify, add, remove, improve knowledge base articles and make them easier consumable. Great, thanks Andy. How about Daniel? Okay. Uh, yeah, so our KDEs, uh, they focus on things like Evolve Loop articles, uh, as a result of a quarterly Pareto analysis that they do. Um, this Pareto analysis is viewed all the way from the CEO of the company uh, it, into product management. And our products are literally changed and uh, as far as processes or functionality based on some of this Pareto analysis. And so that's really the focus of the KDEs. They're also heavily involved in tooling. Um, for example, when we're looking at generating reports going, uh, right now we're reviewing uh, what uh, knowledge management uh, capabilities we want to implement. So they're heavily involved in that. We also have our deputy KDEs and they are generally uh, people from the tier one support that work night shift. and so. They uh, utilize their time by analyzing search results. Uh, they handle the document feedback for the most part. If they get stuck, they go to uh, one, of the, uh, one of the KDEs. They also handle most of the KB help. So they look for duplicates. They recommend articles for uh, archiving. And they dabble a little bit in Evolve Loop articles as well. They're doing quite a good job there, as a matter of fact. Oh, great. And in addition to the, the KDE, the a critical role is the KDE lead. And, and Dan, you want to be in a KDE lead? You want to talk about some of the main activities uh, that you do at uh, GeoTab? Uh, sure. So really, uh, the K, as the lead of the program, what my job is, is to enable others to do their work. So I make sure that, uh, that the proper reports are created, the tools are optimized, um, we re I recruit people. Uh, we have we have this odd problem where our KDEs keep getting promoted, and I have to keep replacing them. Um, <laughs> so I, that's a good problem. Good problem. Uh, also, selling the value of KCS um, do that uh, pretty much year round. Also, by attending uh, things like the Consortium for Service Innovation activities, so that I can identify base practices uh, best practices and incorporate those into our program. Um, also, uh, most of the communications uh, regarding uh, the KDE program go through me. 
Great. Dave, you want to go next on your TD lead roles? Sure. Um, we haven't been overly prescriptive about how our KDE leads should operate um, aside from their uh, other KDE cohorts. As you'll see in, in my answer to the next question, we did things a little bit differently there. Um, so while we haven't been overly prescriptive, we are seeing um, these leaders who are, again, the cream of the cream of the crop, already leading in certain key areas, initiating you know, coaching and feedback uh, sessions with other KDEs, already sort of taking a lead on things. Um, so again, we didn't start our program organically, which I'll talk about in a moment, uh, but it's evolving nicely on its own. That said, going into 2023, uh, we are thinking of, you know, as, as we uh, try to shift a lot of our KDA work towards areas of identified greatest impact and opportunity, um, having them as point on that, which is already sort of happening, but we just want to maybe formalize that a little bit more. All right. Thanks, Dave. Andy, how about you? So yeah, the main work is keeping the team on track, um, stay with the relevant volume, um, because we're all technical people, um, everybody finds something interesting, but is it relevant to the KDE work? Is it not relevant to the KDE work? Also, sometimes it's forcing people to think outside of the box. Do not accept things that we have always done it like this. We, we need to challenge this if we want to be successful. The rest is... Um, driving of, of projects, um, doing the, the business readouts, um, help wherever needed, um, and ensure that um, that we execute and set ourselves limits on what we do concurrently, because that's also one of the biggest issues that you start too many things at once and you cannot execute on them um, and are not no longer efficient on it. All right. Thanks for that, Andy. And, and you guys mentioned that Recruitment is is key, and there's some unique characteristics of a good KDE. Andy, you want to uh, tell us how you identify and recruit your KDEs? So yeah, for us, it's it's all to start with. It's an opt in, so somebody needs to be interested in the role. Um, the main skills that we are searching for is the ability to think outside the box, solve a problem even if it doesn't involve our product directly. How can we influence the customer to do something? that they haven't thought about or how can we fix it in a way we haven't thought about so far uh, so far the willingness for change very important because we try to turn a lot of things upside down um, but also the the ability to influence change because none of us has people reporting to them how do you influence your engineering teams to do the right thing the, to do what is right for the customer at this point in time and to create ideas they need to be able to come up with ideas and say, hey, this is something that we can change. This is the way how I envision it, present it on the needed levels, and, and then get into the execution phase. And th these are the skills we're looking at. The technical side is usually no problem because we're recruiting from internal people, um, be that the part-time or the full-time KDEs. Um, for the full-time KDEs, one thing that's also very important is they need to have that drive to stay relevant. They can't they cannot just say, I'm a KDE now, I don't have to deal with the business anymore. You need to stay relevant in the business. And that's one of the main um, skill sets that we're also looking for with, with our full-time KDEs. Great. Thanks, Andy. And Daniel, sounds like you with all the your KDEs getting promoted all the time, you're doing a lot of recruiting. What are some ways that you <laughs> identify and recruit your KDEs? Okay. Well, first of all, our KDEs are volunteer only. Uh, they, they are subject matter experts first and KDEs second. Um, and what we look for is we look for people that are interested in improving the product. Uh, and quite frankly, that's part of their job description anyway. So it works quite well. Uh, but as second and third tier support, um, they are kind of the cream of the crop, I guess is a good way to put it. And so... Um, we have to uh, in, uh, um, make sure that they can pull the time out of their schedules to uh, do the KDE activities. Um, also, they have to be able to do an analysis or at least be able to learn how to do data analysis. We usually do a, a mentoring type thing uh, in that case. Our deputy KDEs are, like I said before, they're from our first tier support, also volunteer only. Right? 
Now, they come from uh, the general support population, but they're really enthusiastic about KCS and doing analysis. Uh, one key factor here is they really don't like being bored. <laughs> and so uh, they really enjoy having the KCS work to, uh, to, get, to help keep them busy. Great, thanks, Dan. How about uh, Dave and um, Akamai? Well, we did things quite a bit differently. Um, although I, I love the idea of you know having the opt-in and the people that you get to work with are already supercharged. They get it. They they really want to dig in. We actually made the KDE responsibilities part of the role of our senior tier two teams, our PSG product support group and PLE product line experts. So by definition, these were already our deep subject matter experts, most of whom had come up through the ranks of support and had several years of KCS exposure at that point. They are literally the ones who save the day every day when, when things go wrong. They are acutely aware of our, our common pain points, customer needs, as well as the state of our knowledge base. So the decision was made to make all of them our KDEs. Um, now, this isn't the most organic evolution that most organizations would approach, but it allowed us to start making progress in a very short period of time. Um, at a time when we were several years into the journey and had amassed quite a, a, a robust knowledge base that probably needed some gardening at that point. Going forward into next year, we are looking to expand the ranks of our KDEs. Um, I like Daniel's uh, deputy KDE. We were thinking of something like a KDE light. KDE junior didn't sound right. Uh, but we wanted to extend this to, at this point, an opt-in. So standout volunteers could come and help uh, take on some of the work with some of our KDEs of all our KDAs evolving to be things that can be multifaceted and you'll need a bit of a micro team to to work with. So we're really looking to opening the doors for more KDE involvement. Oh, that's great. Thanks Dave, for that. And and everyone wonders when they should start their KDE program. In fact, uh, yeah, um, we had already in chat, hey, when should I start my KCS journey? When should I start the KDE program? So looking back um, at uh, Akamai, when would you have ideally started your KDE program? Well, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty, right? Yeah. Um, and in particular for me, because I, I inherited this great program that was already well off the ground. Uh, the way we did it is we waited about two, two and a half years after the initial slow, healthy rollout of KCS until KCS had become ingrained within the organization. And it was at that point that we established the KDE role and then we started adding KDAs uh, to um, help drive that evolved loop improvement to our knowledge base and overall offerings. So timing wise, um, I think it actually worked out really well. I think it was a good call. Um, who, who's to say if we might have done better if we'd started earlier, possibly even later, probably not later. Um, but it allowed everyone to settle into the KCS habits. We didn't definitely start too fast and it just feels like it's organically grown naturally. Great. How about Andy, looking back, when would you recommend starting a, a KDE program? So we've actually started the KDE program directly when we restarted KC, the KCS program um, on V6. Um, and for us, that, that was the, definitely the right decision because we, we started with a very limited team of three people, kind of a think tank, saying what type of reporting do we need, what type of... Um, of workflows do we need? How do we interact between each other? Um, and obviously we pulled people in that um, that had this nature for, for doing that, that have naturally done that across the board anyway. Um, and also to, to start looking out for who are the KDEs in your, own, in, in your infrastructure? Who can you train for that? Because your most technical people are not always necessarily the best KDEs because they need to have a different skill set. So searching for these KDEs, searching for them and, and finding them um, and creating the infrastructure was, was very important. It was good to have that um, the time of six months to a year in the shadows before revealing it to public. Okay, thanks. How about Dan? Daniel, what, what's your recommendation? All right, uh, well, the KDE program was already underway before I joined Geotab. Uh, and But Geotab did include the KDE uh, section as part of starting up KCS. And uh, it sounds like it worked out really well. Uh, the KDEs, what they did initially is they helped guide and sell the program. Okay, 
Um, so support was the main target and the KDEs were able to give a lot of feedback to make sure it fit the use cases, okay? Um, now it took about a year before the KDEs were utilized as KDEs. Uh, part of that was uh, uh, some training aspects and uh, getting some tooling underway. Yeah, in fact, that's a, a great segue to the, the next question. In order to, to start your KDE program, what are the things that you have to put in place to enable uh, your KDE? So you wanna expand on that, Daniel, what you're talking about? Uh, sure, sure. Um, I think I mentioned before that we uh, that uh, we focus a lot on reports, and quite frankly, a successful KDE KDA program does rely on really good reporting. Uh, we started out initially with doing things via spreadsheets, and it was so time consuming that the return on investment was was just not there. And but we built out the reporting, and now the KDEs can spend. Uh, more of their time actually doing the analysis is trying to put everything together, okay? Um, now, the KDEs are the best of the best, and so utilizing their time effectively was really a key focus. Uh, again, going back to the reporting. Uh, we also do a regularly quarterly presentation to the company. I mentioned before, all the way from the CEO down to the product managers, uh, review this, even though they might not attend the actual presentation. Um, but also, I think a, a factor here, too, is that we've created an environment where it's understood that the KDEs are kind of running the program. The KDE lead is more of an enabler to uh, uh, give them the tools that they need to happen. Great. Thank you. Hey, Andy, how about at uh, NetApp? What are the things? that you guys put in place for your KDEs? So one of the things we've put in place is we are, we are tracking um, our activities within JIRA. So we have our own JIRA, our own workflows that are also linked with all of the engineering JIRAs that, that we're working with. Um, and we've implemented a Kanban methodology in there. Um, we've invested quite a lot in reporting. We've invested uh, quite a lot into the full-time KDE structure and how do we make it so that we're not falling in the, into the common pitfalls of having a full-time KDE? Um, and, and this framework for, for the full-time KDEs was, was very important. Also, um, with this framework, we have this quote-unquote mentoring program for the part-time KDEs and processes on how you influence, on how you present to engineering and to, to the higher functions in engineering. Um, we also try to set up... Um, meetings where we get all the KDEs together for half an hour to an hour every week, um, where we are meeting by uh, once a week or every two weeks within a knowledge domain, um, where we put together a, a KDE playbook and, and processes so the KDEs really can see what should I do, what are my tasks, how do I interact with that. And we've also invested into a tool called Glassbox, where you can actually interact with the session of a customer in a specific environment where I can see where they struggle on our KB page on a specific article and can then improve targetly this article if it was highly used. And this is this is some of the things that um, that helped us very much to get this program off the of the uh, of the floor. Oh, that's great. Yeah, tools and reports. And the more you can get access you can give them to the customer journey, the better. Um, so that's awesome. How about Dave at uh, Akamai? Yeah, a lot of the same points just made. Um, we set up a community space for our KDE so they could collaborate on all these things. And central to that community was a KDE runbook, which has a breakdown of each of the KDAs that we're working on, how best to accomplish them, uh, what we can do, shared best practices. And key to all of that, as uh, my colleagues have highlighted, is to have relevant reports, dashboards ready. Especially for us at Akamai, where we have all of our KDEs as part-time, when they pivot, when they swivel to that knowledge work, which is not the majority of their time, we have to make sure that we are using the best use of their time. We're not making them think and hunt and click and so on, that they could just dive right in and they know um, the things that are most impactful that they can work on. 
to support that, we have monthly meetings and we also have a, a dedicated uh, WebEx chat channel for ongoing collaboration between sessions and so on. And one other thing that we're doing uh, starting in Q4 is we're establishing a new um, primary or high level KDA. I call it the knowledge profile. And basically this is an analysis and a review of that particular domain to establish a number of key factors. Um, such as the overall state of the knowledge base, the breakdown of its availability between internal, external, uh, the evolving new versus known rates, the knowledge needing rate based on case analysis and so on, topic and content types that resonate most with customers. And that becomes the baseline against which we can gauge the prioritization and ultimately the success of all other KDAs that we work on. So it's kind of like a one KDA to rule them all sort of approach. And we're going to uh, start off 2023 uh, doing just that. Great. Well, thanks. Ava, um, and some of those successes. So what are some of the, the benefits? You mentioned the successes and the impact, but what are the benefits that uh, you've experienced uh, from your KDA program at Akamai? Well, definitely the, the most obvious thing is a healthier knowledge base um, through the editing, creating, merging and deduplication, as well as uh, judicious archiving and deletion. You know, these are the growing pains, right? We're five years into this journey and you start having different types of content management challenges. So our KDEs and the analysis and the reports that we run, I really help them uh, do some of that. Um, really one of the biggest things that we've seen uh, that has helped not only propel the program, but uh, give us that visibility for, uh, into leadership is this KCS driven problem management and the sprint reviews that we do. Uh, again, just to plug, we did a presentation on this in the last year that you might want to check out. Those have been a really big success. Uh, we are basically looking at patterns in client topics as well as knowledge article reuse. Um, that helps us identify trends in the product usage, pain points, areas of need and opportunity and client interest. And we pass those on to engineering and product management. This helps us improve not only the product, but also our ability to provide proactive support and ultimately more um, automated intelligence support in the future. Awesome. A lot of benefits. Daniel, how about at uh, Geotab or some of the benefits that you guys have experienced? Uh, we have seen uh, some sub substantial product improvements, uh, basically using the, K, uh, the KDA as the voice of the customer type thing uh, uh, to identify the customer pain points. Um, also, uh, some of the teams are requiring uh, a person either be a KCS coach, a deputy KDE, um, or a KDE in order to be promoted to a senior level type position. Um, so uh, that's been very helpful as well. Uh, the deputy KDEs, I got to say, have had an absolutely huge impact on the KCS health. Um, breaking that out really, uh, really increased the health of our overall knowledge base tremendously. That's great. Yeah, and I think and you did a nice... Uh, drill down on your deputy KDEs and such when you're doing the Search Unify vendor series. That might be a good one to put in there too. Um, and I think uh, as a result of that and as a result of this talk, uh, I think many are exploring that uh, in a deputy KDE role. But how about um, at um, Dave? Um, I'm sorry. Um, sorry about that. Oh, Andy. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's All me. The, we you again. guys have talked a lot about your benefits. Um, that's why I thought you already went because uh, reducing the cost per case and uh, cost per issue and all those things. But you want to describe some yeah. of the benefits at uh, NetApp? Yes, I'm not going into the cost per case thing. That's a, uh, that's something that Ryan has described better than I ever could. Um, so what is the most significant outcome that we are seeing? So we see a reduction in customer effort. How do they interact with support? how much friction, how much um, do they lose in that interaction? And that is partly coming from the KB work, partly from the product improvements, partly from automation improvements. We're seeing in, in certain areas where we have KDE, full KDE coverage, significant reduction in case volume in the areas that we've worked projects on. 
not not in the overall areas, but in the ones that we really focused on, where we saw significant impact, we see a reduction in cases that are that are being handled or need to be handled. Um, we also see a, a huge reduction in hardware shipments um, due to us also maintaining some of the automation. And we see an increase in the automation capabilities where we simply automate more cases than we've ever done before to, to make sure that this is running as smoothly as possible if the customer needs something, if they have a problem. Um, so we're actually not in the need to for them to, to jump through hoops and interact with us too heavily. That's great. Thanks, Annie. A lot of benefits. How many, any recommendations on ways to sell those benefits? How do you sell those benefits um, of your KDA program at uh, NetApp for that ongoing support? So yeah, we have basically um, a bunch of readouts. Um, we have a readout with our VP every two weeks um, where we talk with him about what are we doing? What do we see in terms of trends? Um, we also report quarterly out to to the level above to say what what have we done, what do we see on impact um, out of this. Um, so that visibility gives us um, quite a lot of um, quite a lot of um, help and assurance from them. And they're also helping us if we hit roadblocks with engineering with other functions um, to make us progress um, the things that we are driving. Um, the other thing that we are doing is. Um, we try to involve the publishers as much as possible because realistically we are executing based on the data that they're providing us. So the most important thing is to, to keep the publishers up to date to make sure they know why they do KCS on a day-to-day -day basis because that's the most important thing. If your solve loop is not working, your KDE program will never be successful. And this is the, the main thing to always keep in mind there. Thanks. Thanks for that. And how about um, Dave, you want to share some of the ways that you guys sell it at Akamai? Sure. Well, we definitely position the KDE program as critical to the success of the KCS program, as I'm sure most uh, of you can appreciate. This represents much of the promise of that evolve loop uh, that we work so hard to get to. Um, so we communicate through monthly newsletters, blogs. We make sure to highlight our successes in QBRs and in regular uh, program reviews with senior management. It's become an integral part of, again, our whole problem management strategy, which I keep talking about, which has been a real success and is highly visible uh, to leadership. One other thing I'll throw in here is you also need to make sure that you're selling the value of the program to the KDEs themselves. And sometimes you can get a little bit of tunnel vision, you work on your particular domain area, you're working on domain curation. We always wanna make sure that we are sharing back with them the, the success, the impact uh, that their efforts are having because um, nothing's more important to keeping it uh, uh, vital and strong than that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, underscored that. I see David Kay in the chat underscoring uh, that and uh, how critical link accuracy is. So uh, absolutely. And then, uh, Daniel, how about at uh, Geotab? Uh, so we do a yearly presentation to management uh, about what uh, has changed. Uh, our successes, our failures, all of that kind of stuff. Um, also, uh, uh, we have a monthly newsletter in the company. Uh, where uh, KCS events are promoted. Uh, and we also have a KCS chat room. So, and that's going 24 seven. So those are our primary focuses. All right, great. And one of the benefits of these uh, KCS in action is hearing about ditches to avoid. So Daniel, since we just, uh, what are some ditches that you would recommend people avoid just based on your experience and engaging with others in a KDA program? Sure. Um, so as I mentioned, all of our uh, KDE programs volunteer only. So we try to take measures to ensure that management agrees to provide time uh, to allow people to do their KDE work. Um, also, executive management buy-in was absolutely critical. If you don't have executive management buy-in, you're... you're you're going to have a hard time uh, getting the K, uh, KDA program going. Um, one thing I'd highly focus on is watch out for the, we will do it when the fire dies down response. Okay. Um, 
Uh, we try to make managers understand that there's two ways to put out a fire. You can put out, you can use water or you can use like a chemical fire extinguisher. If you throw water on a grease fire, it's going to explode, right? So using the proper method of putting out the fire is very critical. And the KDA program uh, indicates which way is, which is the best approach to putting out a fire. Um, and then uh, really above all, take the time to create the reports. Yeah, reporting so critical. How about Andy? What are some ditches you recommend people avoid? As, as I said earlier already, um, stay focused on what's relevant. Um, stay with the 80% of the repetitive volume you have. Um, don't go chasing after what's interesting. And your KDEs need to focus on that and not dive off into irrelevant stuff. Um, that, that's the main challenge. Um, make sure that everybody understands um, why they're doing it. Um, especially on the KDE level, what is the outcome and, and show them what the outcome is. Um, also, do not exclude things because of it's easy or it's hard or it can be handled in a minute by a TSE already um, or because we've always done it like that. You, you need to challenge every single stone that is there and verify if it's still needed in 2022 or maybe 2023 soon. Um, Limit the amount of concurrent things that you're having in the pipeline. You cannot handle 300 things with a single KDE. Realistically, some of the bigger projects, three, four, is already overstretching it. You might need to limit yourself onto one or two projects per, per KDE. And you need to have focus on the, on the time management for the part-time KDEs. Um, as Daniel said, some managers have this attitude of, oh, we do it when, whenever we have no case volume. Um, underestimating the, the the cycle of this because if you don't do your KDE work, you have more cases that you will firefight with and it will magnify your problems. If you invest wisely and strategically the time of the KDEs, you have less cases and you can actually get out of your firefighting mode um, and, and get into a more proactive mode. Great. Thanks for those insights. And uh, Dave, what are your recommendations on ditches to avoid? <laughs> I actually kind of phrase mine in terms of make sure you do this instead of make sure you don't. I uh, hope it translates. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, it's absolutely essential that you have your knowledge domain activities uh, and their best practices clearly documented and supported, and if possible, ranked in priority. Um, again, especially if your KDEs are part-time and they're swivel chairing, you really want to make sure that there's no loss in time and focus there. Um, another thing is make sure you're focusing on the impact and the outcomes of your KDA work and not just the number of KDAs that you're, you're accomplishing, because not all KDAs are the same in terms of level of effort or expected uh, impact and improvement. Um, again, prioritize your KDAs, uh, which evolve over time. So you have to make sure you map it to that knowledge profile. Where are we having our biggest needs and make sure that your KDA list is ranked uh, appropriately. Um, I mentioned before about not all uh, KDAs are the same. We're trying to normalize the, the, the KDA. What does it take to accomplish a KDA? And it gets really murky with something like content curation, where somebody could edit five documents and that's your KDA. But how many hours does that take? Well, if these are the most critical documents, that might have taken a long time to actually get perfect or as close to perfect as we can ever get. Whereas... Um, another person with the same level of effort might create 10 or 15 new documents or something. So that's really tricky, but uh, try to make sure that you've got some sort of normalization in the level of effort. Uh, as said before, always make sure that your KD see the value and the impact that they're having. Um, and these last ones we're learning, don't be too rigid in your approach. So it's important to give them some autonomy. These are some of the big brain, deep expert people who have natural inclinations to work on this over that and so on. But at the same time, try to subtly, subtly steer that ship towards the areas of identified greatest need and impact. And lastly, try to play to the strengths. Uh, everybody comes into this with a different skill set and interests. And you really start to see this when you consider things like multimedia work where that KDE may be the next James Cameron, right? Or they, they may be able to direct the show 
or they may just want to do the voice work, or they may just want to be the technical director and then have other people, maybe those KDE lights we were talking about, uh, filling in the blanks and putting it all together. So um, make sure that you embrace the various skill sets out there and you give them just enough uh, freedom to uh, work to their strengths. That's great. Well, thank you. And those are the uh, the predefined questions that we had. We had some in chat and we were hoping to just have a few minutes to go over those. I think one of the questions was regarding um, coach and a KD. So you have the coach that's focused on developing the people and the, the KD is really focused on um, the analytical and improving that domain. But uh, do you all want to give us some examples on, have you found that it's very different people, um, similar people? Have you ever given the same? It sounds like um, some of the deputy KDs are at Geotab are also coaches, but you guys want to elaborate on uh, the coach role versus the KD role and where you've combined it and where you've kept it separate? Um, at Geotab, it's not uncommon for us to have a coach KDE combination. Uh, Monty, one of our uh, uh, deputy KDEs on the call here is both a coach and a deputy KDE. Um, it, it's a person that is highly interested in KCS, and so we don't limit them. Um, they, are, they do require two different skill sets. So uh, some people have both skill sets, some people don't. Um, trying to fit person a person into a position that they really don't work well in is worse than not having that position filled at all. So. Yeah, great, great wisdom there. Um, Dave or Andy, anything you guys want to add? Well, similarly, where it's a natural fit, we don't discourage it. And we do have some uh, cases where people have evolved from being a, a coach and then joining that uh, top tier group and becoming KDE. So we have those existing relationships at times, uh, but we do see their their um, mandates as being a little bit different. Yeah, very, very similar to, to Dave and Daniel. There are people that can do both and want to do both, but then you have the people that love to do the one and hate doing the other. Um, and it's really you need to go with what the person likes to do. I think Dave said that earlier. Um, you utilize the skills of the person rather than force them into uh, into an area that they cannot operate in. We had another um, chat question about recognition of your KDE. I mean, you know, KCS is really a team sport, and you've mentioned how you're so dependent on a good solve loop. Um, and, and so I've seen in a lot of organizations where the recognition is their domain is doing really well and they're seeing benefits in the product, et cetera. But do you guys have any specifics where you're doing recognition of the uh, KDE? We, we do call outs at, you know, the usual junctures and newsletters and things like that. Um, we are playing around with the idea of having something that kind of builds a bridge towards an impact based focus uh, and possibly even gamifying it. Right. So, uh, where we have, uh, where we can kind of trace the the outcomes, uh, whether it's increases in content availability, page views, uh, quality scores, things like that, to KDE work, uh, we'll have some sort of a points based, not economy, but a make it a challenge that that kind of thing. And that's another light way to uh, to call people's accomplishments out. Cool. And quickly, anything that uh, Daniel or uh, Andy want to add? I think uh, they've covered it quite well. We do spot awards every once in a while for okay. for uh, big achievements. But, uh, All right. Well, great. Yeah. Well, I see we are actually timing out. And I do want to thank our panel today. They put a lot of effort into uh, this. And uh, so really appreciate it. And one of the, again, the byproducts of this, they've summarized their answers into a nice spreadsheet. And so we're going to be sending that out. So for each of the questions, you can see a summary of their answers. And you'll again, you'll see that it's very different. You'll see similarities, but you'll see differences. And that's uh, one of the things that we really want to emphasize is that um, you need to really tailor this to your company. So really uh, appreciate everyone participating and look for the recording, the presentation, as well as the, the Q&A that will be coming out in the next few days. 
So thank you all and you have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks all.